satellites to put up into the satellite. And then the satellite is communicating with the other person who is having his hand mobile or something like that. So this is how a satellite communication works. But this can be, uh, but initially how it was, if you knew there was only one line uh, coming from the phone, not to the phone, the, the landline and then connecting to the other house through other wire itself. So that system was removed due to satellite only. So other operational modes for satellites are, these are the four more typical operation modes that is the standby mode. In a standby mode, a satellite is inactive, like all the systems in the satellite are inactive and typically in a mode which separates from launcher. So you heard about people talking, uh, sir, talking about the rocket in the last class, right? So that rockets, until it separates from that rocket, it is in a standby mode for first seconds and then it comes into an operational mode then comes where the communication part handles so initial acquisition mode that is typically where we the satellite has entered and separated from the launcher and then it starts to communicate to the ground station by its own then comes the normal mode where the satellite performs the tasks for it which is best designed like i told you there are some mission objectives for which it is designed so it does it starts performing those kind of activities then other than that it comes a safe mode which when entered in a safe mode if it, any anomaly occurs and detected the satellite by default goes into a safe mode so that other electronics on board are not damaged so telemetry tracking and command is the main important part in a satellite communication where as you can see there are four phases for any satellite communication to happen and to validate itself these are the four types of phases, like uh, I'll tell you by phase one. So this is the phase when after the launch, it is in an awaiting contact phase. Then comes a pre-pass phase where the contact is established with the ground network. Then comes a pass phase where all the health monitoring has happened and then satellite goes through the divergence of the given ground station. So as you can see the projected arrow here, so this is where the satellite communicates with the ground station, the, all the four things. And we will also, in the past days, we will be giving what we have to give it for the next orbit to do, so something like that. So this happens in the telemetry trauma, tracking command system, which is also a subsystem of a satellite. So this system handles the communication part of it. So how does this happen? So as you know, as you might have seen, there are antennas, but which goes on satellite are called as UHF antennas. There are the ultra high frequency antennas. So it comes as an uplink and a downlink. So what is uplink? So something where the satellite is putting up its information to the ground station and downlink is where ground station is communicating with the satellite. So there are two communication happening. So there are frequency band as well re regarding that thing. So it is an X band, which is a high gain frequency band and an S band, which is a low gain frequency band. Okay, so this gain depends on what type of data are you going to send. So mostly in communication, we use S band so that uh, the gain is less, but the accuracy and the most system are reliable in the S band system. So there are two types of uh, UHF dipole antenna and pans antennas, which are used in small satellites. But if you want more high gain, you can go with uh, Hi, sir, you're on mute. Okay. Okay. Am I audible now? Yep. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, hello. Hello. Are you able to hear us, sir? Uh, 
and everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, can you hear us? Oh, I'm audible now. Sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So the UHF antenna, which is an ultra high frequency antenna, this, and this is how the satellite would work if it in a UHF antenna. So there will be a receiver part of the satellite and a transmitter part. So the transmitter would be receiving anything sent from the operator from the ground station. That is, if it is in data handling part, it is data handled here, modulated, the signal is modulated and then transmitted through a ground station. In the receiver part, the satellite receives the information, it demodulates it, and again sends its uh, data to the operator using a ground station. So this is how a processing of any signal happens in a satellite. It can be uh, uh, types of uh, conversions we can use, which can improve our communication with satellites. So this is how a normal satellite would look and which would have an X-band downlink for science data to send in the science data and S-band uplink downlink for controlling the whole satellite to deploy its uh, any functionality. So other than that, what I am actually working on is what my motivation is to make a satellite for a quantum key distribution analysis. So what is quantum key distribution analysis? So this optical ground station comes in place when I'm talking with satellite key, uh, quantum key distribution. In quantum key distribution, uh, we can protect any data that is being sent through a satellite. So we wanted to make something for these, these kind of uh, accounts. So our project goal for this project is to tackle the effects of the acquisition pointing and the tracking of satellites the atmospheric turbulence and the channel losses between any satellite transmitter, which I showed you previously, and an optical ground station. So we would be dealing with lasers to talk with when it comes with satellite communication. As of now, I told you there was UHF antenna, so the better of performance would give an optical ground station and an optical satellite. So to give an example from International Space Station, if you have come across International Space Station, you know that uh, it always communicates with the ground station. So there was a stream of data which had to be sent from ISS. So they used laser communication and they used both the kind of communication, which was the UHF, uh, like the radio frequency and the satellite downlink, which is the laser downlink uh, system. So uh, 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 what was that? Uh, laser took around uh, four minutes, but whereas the normal UHF took 11 minutes to send the same data to the Earth. So this is how difference can be in the laser satellite. So that is how fast we can get into communication as well. So we tried to integrate many tools which were available. So we came into phase screening generation. We are mostly done with all the analysis part of to achieve this kind of satellite in the near future. But uh, we are also looking into, so this was one of our simulation which we could do and how broadly we could send this laser from a satellite to a ground station. So that was how we were looking into. So there were various losses that we had to look into where when it comes to a free space optical channel. So there are many things which are going in the free space optical channel link. So to give an example of the same, I can show you a satellite demonstration which had happened by NASA and they launched just on the December 27, 2021. So this uh, satellite is going to demonstrate how we can use laser for better than uh, the normal satellites which are being deployed in this space. So this is how an, their satellite is going to work. So this is a downlink part and this is an uplink part of the same satellite communication, optical satellite communication. And this would be the ground station of the uh, optical satellite. So this is how an optical ground station works. Inside an optical ground station as well, there would be a laser which would be focusing on the satellite. And the whole system is then generated 
and stored in the data, uh, the data is stored in the system and then sent to a graph, any research center which requires this kind of data. So there are many people going ahead in the optical ground station part because this might be a near future as of for the satellites for a better communication. So there are various losses when we'll have to look into optical communication. These are the main few losses. Mainly you would say that uh, when you throw laser into sky, so you don't, when there is rain, there is dispersion of this uh, light, laser light, right? So this is what one kind of loss is. So we have rain losses, we have fog losses, we have point ahead losses and pointing losses. There are five to six losses which will have to accomplish them, then we can achieve the actual optical communication from satellite to a ground station. Because as we know, Earth has an atmosphere. So there are the conditions varying there shouldn't affect the optical thing which we are looking into or communication for a higher accuracy. So after this, uh, this was all about our studies and now we are looking into and now we are actually building a ground station so that it can transmit these kind of lasers and look into the satellites which can downlink their data from the space whichever they have whatever data they have stored in so that was all about satellite communication so this was just an overview of what we could think about satellites and with communication part and if you have any doubts or such things you can ask me but i would refer you if you're making any satellite for your own to make it to understand how good a satellite is you can look at to satsearch.co which provides types of various satellite uh, equipments to you so that you can build your own satellite so that was all about this presentation and i would wanted to remind you that uh, isro is launching a satellite uh, which is called as an synthetic aperture radar so it is a demonstration satellite so the launch is scheduled on 6 a.m on february 14 so you guys have a good condition like good reason to get up in the morning and watch this like what's this rocket launch after two years from an Indian land so that would be interesting for you guys and other than that as I told you you can look into more optical ground stations and these are what people are building into in satellite communication for the future and uh, such things so thank you beyond welcome yeah, yeah so uh, okay. yeah go ahead continue yeah. continue continue Barush. Oh, so like Anand sir, you just talked, you just talked about like using quantum key distribution methods. So I was just curious about knowing how fast it is, ex like, is it ex expect, like how fast it is expected to be like if with UHF antennas, it is like you said around 11 minutes, then how fast yes. it is expected. Uh, quantum key distribution is same as the laser communication. Uh, it is just a uh, security for the laser communication. Like if anybody else also has the ground station, if they are acquiring the data, if you're sending some data and someone else is acquiring, we can block that data in with use of quantum key distribution. This is already being elaborated in the uh, DRDO and such stuff because their data is very official, so they can't give it so that public can use it. It happens through fiber optics as of now on Earth but future might be where they, they data especially for themselves or something like that. So that is where content key distribution comes in place. It would take the same time as a laser communication. Uh, okay, uh, so hi sir. So uh, I have uh, like basically two or three questions. So first one is like, what are your, uh, so you talked about like communications and also we all know that the uh, satellites that are evolving, uh, this, uh, that, are, that are evolving earth, they have all merely around max to max around thousand kilometers distance from the earth, uh, earth surface. But like, I want to know, like, how, how is the communication still being established with voyagers? The voyagers that has been sent like years ago and like they are even even they have even crossed the solar system and have entered uh, uh like they have even crossed the solar system so how is still the connection being established yeah uh, 
Uh, yeah. So in the in the deep space missions, what comes in place is the low gain frequency antennas, which I was talking about. There are two antennas, one for transmitting only the data, and other comes only for transmitting the communication link and like it should ping itself wherever it is so that is one kind of antenna which has it completely works on radio frequency so a bunch of radio frequencies left you are not communicating with voyager all the time on a day so you are communicating with it when it is actually well with in focus with your ground station so nasa has three ground station around the earth so whenever it turns around if if the earth is in the exact position as the voyager is in then it can communicate like uh, then only it can tell its position, something like that. So basically, what is the speed like? Uh, what is the speed of that communication like uh, uh, in kilometers per hour or in seconds and regarding the kilometer per second? Uh, in kilo, it's not about kilometer in second, but it takes around nine nine minutes to twenty five minutes something only to communicate with Mars. So if you are sending something from here, it will take nine minutes to the uh, radio frequency to reach uh, uh, Mars at some point yeah. at, at a faster space. So in, if talking about Voyager, you will have to know that Voyager will be sending some link already and we are just going to capture it. So it depends on how far it is. So if it is say around now, just for an example, thousand kilometers far away. 20, 10,000 kilometers far away. So it should be uh, within the limitations of the radio frequency. So if my frequency band is going in a speed of 10 kilometers per hour, so that is also coming in 10 kilometers per hour, you'll have to do the calculation that we are going to have a connect with it. Then we'll, we'll know that, yeah, we may establish connect, connection with the satellite. But deep space okay. satellites, there are, this, is, this is the whole, whole new challenge. Okay, so if you're talking about these deep uh, satellites, so like, can the communication be also set up if it's in a different galaxy uh, or if it's uh, in a different end, then like if it's uh, like if it's diagonal to, if the satellite is really diagonal to that of Earth uh, in uh, in the whole Milky Way galaxy. So, so is, so it, does it, is it like it unlimited or? Is it like uh, the range is like unlimited or uh, it, it also has some limitations, physical barriers? You know? uh, yeah, if you are going across the, so like our solar system, there comes a barrier where the frequency doesn't go through uh, across the, that kind of technology we haven't built it yet. So something where this kind of technology comes in place where you'll have to communicate other than that. So we would have any relay satellite in between so there would be a relay satellite in between to minimize this communication link so that gap if you are saying you want to transfer like transport to another dimension or a multiverse you'll have to have a satellite in between two multiverses to communicate from this multiverse then it will communicate to, to the satellite then it will be communicating to the other multiverse you are over there else you will not be communicating with these higher like in in deep space in vacuum radio frequency goes as quickly as possible but depends on how far it is okay so basically if you are talking about on the multiversal level so it has to be like there has to be a bridge over there and so yes, is it possible yes. to have an in a uh, if you talk about the universal level so is it possible that uh, no bridge or no such satellite can uh, connection satellite is required so like is it possible uh, as of now, we haven't any done any missions as such, but uh, yeah, it might be possible that it depends on how good is your relay communication would be. So you'll have to make sure that your relay communication is good with establishing the ground station because the ground station comes in the main picture if you want to contact with the satellite. So it depends how well your ground station is equipped with the relay satellite. Okay, and what so are your views you on? Can uh, see, yeah, you may continue. Uh, look, like as you can see now, James Webb is at one point of Earth, right, in the Lagrange yeah. point. So from there, uh, if you are, if it wants to communicate with Earth, if there is a satellite in between, it can send images more quicker than how it is sending now. 
Yes. And what are your views on uh, the technology that Starlink is using? Uh, so do you have any prior information about Starlink? Yeah, yeah. Starlink is using UHF only, but now they are, as you can see, as you can see in the last one year, they have minimized their launch because even they are working on the laser communication for relay satellite. Yeah. So that one satellite is communicating with the ground station and other satellites in the space are communicating using laser so that it, should, it cannot have a communication in laser communication with the ground station, but an UHF with the ground station. Okay. And uh, you were saying like, uh, we, we are like, I am uh, like you are working on to plan, plan uh, to plan something that will replace this laser communication to make data more encrypted so that uh, no one could uh, like access that data. So am I right? Yes. That is called as satellite QKD, like content yeah, yeah. distribution for satellites. Yeah. Yes. Satellite QKD. So, uh, so like I, I have a silly, a silly question regarding that. So is it possible to access the data while we are transferring it through lasers? Uh, so through lasers, the communication once it's established, after we make sure that we are sending data, the pack packets are sent. Yeah. So there are packets which are sent in lasers. So yes. that packet is encrypted using QKD. So that packet is closed using a lock where only the main Bob and the user can use it. Okay. And if we are, if we are not using QKD, so uh, can these packets be accessed? Uh, no. Then not at all. Any only quantum computers can do that. And QQD will uh, even restrict quantum computers from doing that. Yes. <laughs> That's so why. that is why you 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 can see right. There are many people making uh, quantum computers as well as now. There are many yeah, companies, yeah. IBM and such, making yeah, quantum especially computers. Especially Chinese companies. Yeah. Oh, Chinese are making everything. They are making their home and moon in just next <laughs> two or three years. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so, what about the uh, that all the losses that we had talked about? So, I think the uh, there are technologies that would be developing in future to stop those losses, like rain loss and all. Yes, those losses can be stopped. That is what mainly the technology would work on. The more, like how it can stop is how good would be our weather forecasting. So how that uh, that would come is like this satellite, which is going to be launched by ISRO now, the synthetic aperture radar, that can give a better state of how our next, uh, the weather determination would keep a key factor. After that, we can work on the actual technology. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. So, very interesting presentation. I had a few questions uh, when you were talking about laser communication specifically. So, I mean, you were talking about how there is atmospheric turbulence and everything when in laser communication. How powerful would a laser need to be to get through that and still like manage to send a signal that's readable to the through like a thousand kilometers of atmosphere and all? Uh, so how good uh, the laser would be, would be a less uh, care for us. Like laser can be powerful using ground station only, but what the main part would be how accurate our mirrors can be to catch that laser in the satellite or the ground station. So that mirror has to have a, a very good accuracy. So it, ha it has to have a good angular resolution. It has to have a deflection angle. As you can see, James Webb also, the cam mirrors over there, deflects itself according to the sun, right? It changes its position. So similarly, the mi mirrors in the ground station and the satellite plays a key role. So power would be uh, increased or decreased, but it is a constant, say, at some kilowatts. But if the camera is power, uh, like the mirror is powerful, it can transmit into directly into the ground station that we are looking for. And so the second question, kind of following up on same sort of thing is, you yourself mentioned that lasers diverge over a long distance. So if you have a lot of people using laser communication, you'll get a lot of interlap between their various signals. How, how do you deal with that? So it depends on your ground stations. So 
not everywhere the ground station is going to be. So laser ground stations are typically at some places at a higher altitude so that there is minimum less of turbulence and such things. And then there are, from the ground station, you get your data. So it's nothing happening like, hundreds of satellites would come together, send the lasers down. So those lasers would be captured by the ground stations, but your data would be given to yourself as you require for your satellite. That's all. Thanks. Yes. Uh, uh, which space rovers and the space station is similar kind of communication or is anything different? Uh, can I repeat it? This in the space rovers like the Mars rover and the space stations, do they use this similar kind of communication or are they different from the satellite? Uh, they use similar kind of communication because they'll have to eventually communicate with the satellite, right? Because they are communicating with the satellite and then satellite is communicating with the ground stations in the Earth. So Perseverance first communicates with the MAVEN satellite, which is orbiting the Mars. Then it communicates with the deep space uh, ground stations, which NASA has at three places in, around the Earth. Yes, sir. So, and the second question is, so when you lose communication with the satellite, for example, it comes to the area where it communicates with the ground station. What do you do if you're not going to communicate with it? How do you deal with this? Uh, so uh, there are, like, see, if a satellite is going through the ground station, that is the time you can establish the contact with it. So in a day, if a satellite is present in an orbit of 300 to 500 kilometer orbit, in a day, it can pass through the same ground station four times a day. So there are times where you can communicate with it. If you're not establishing the contact in the four times of the pass of the satellite, then there's problem with the satellite. Else, there are team where they are working constantly on the satellite. So that is where the pass phase of the satellite happens. So when it is passing through us, we contact, we make an establish a contact with it. We check all the onboard electronics are working properly. We send the data with you, like, we collect the data first and we send next command for the satellite that what it has to do from the ground station. Yes. 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 Uh, so I think there is uh, there are no more questions and I will uh, so like it was uh, so I think uh, Poru should end up this session. Poru, you there? Okay, Poru is there. Okay, uh, so I will just sum up this session. So thank you, An Nagesh sir. It was uh, it was really nice to meet you and. Uh, the lecture was really great, especially, uh, I think I shouldn't say this, but I think this is the most, uh, for especially for me personally, it was uh, the most engaging lecture uh, so far because I am not more interested over like physics sections, but I am mostly interested in the computer science or all that uh, kind of communications and uh, in those sections. So it was a it was like a heavenly uh, lecture for me uh, so uh, it was it was a really great session overall and thank you for all your efforts for making presentation and presenting yourself so beautifully thank you thanks a lot thank you thank you Prana. thanks for giving me the platform yeah, yeah. it was great to thanks. interact with you guys thank you yeah thanks sir.